Well, we now return to our latest installment of the uh, Ben Simmons trade watch, and we think we, we might have something. Uh, the Athletic reporting that there is some trade talk heating up uh, on Ben Simmons uh, surrounding perhaps a James Harden deal between the Brooklyn Nets and Philadelphia 76ers. As you know, Ben Simmons has not played a game uh, this season, and James Harden uh, in his uh, second season in Brooklyn – uh, was has been injured a little bit lately. hasn't hasn't quite looked like himself. Uh, motivation questions and all that, you know. So, drink. The question is: um, Is this the? Uh, is this finally a potential deal that we've been waiting for? Outstanding, absolutely yes, 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 and with a little gravy on it, yes. Um, here's the deal: We we've been talking about for months these ridiculous um, trade requests that the Philadelphia 76ers have been throwing out there for Ben Simmons. And they've been ridiculous, folks. Just go back and do the research. You'll see that crap they asked for for Golden State and, and, and other teams. Just ridiculous. This is the first time, and, and before I jump, before I go too far, let me say, you, you referenced, we, we got this from the Athletic. I respect the Athletic, so I think if they put it out there, it's, it's, it got some credence behind it. So that's why I feel confident enough to, you know, dive into this now that they, you know, said something. And I think, I, for what it's worth, I think in the coming weeks or so, we'll get more from ESPN and, and, and Fox Sports and all these other outlets that people probably waiting on it to hear. The insiders, you know, shams, all of them, we'll, we'll get more. But if Philly F's this up, if they do not make this trade, that front office deserves to be fired. And because I'm telling you right now, they're not going to, yo, I'm, I'm so serious. That, that, that's going to clean house. Because you're not, listen, you're not going to win the Eastern Conference. You like, Let's keep it real here. You're not winning the Eastern Conference if you got Joel Embiid and, and Seth Curry and Tobias Harris as your top three. That's just not good enough. I'm sorry. That ain't good enough. Because, yeah, you might... Look, as you look at how the Eastern Conference is, is like, currently constructed, at some point, the Bucks are going to turn back into the Bucks. I just I just got that feeling they're going to get back clicking. They're going to turn into the Bucks. I think the Nets will have enough with a part-time... Kyrie Irving, an uh, unmotivated James Harden, and a healthy Kevin Durant to beat you in a seven-game series. And quite frankly, if the Chicago Bulls or the Cleveland Cavaliers are as real as people say they are, you'll have a problem with them in a seven-game series. I ain't even got into Miami and Boston and those teams. So the Philly got to make this work. They need to go get James Harden. Now, nah. You say to yourself, if James Harden's so good, why is he available? Shall I say, here's the thing about the Nets in that situation. It's a guy there by the name of Kyrie Irving. And he has a knack of, uh, you know, not playing well with others. And, um, you know, he rubs people the wrong way. I mean, we, we heard LeBron James kind of hint at that briefly one time. We seen how it went down in, in, in Boston in his time with, you know, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, all those guys. And then when he got to Brooklyn, we seen how he started off the Brooklyn era with the, the flopping around before COVID even became a, a ordeal. He was already um, social distancing from the team, dare I say. So... We see, we see how that's going down, right? But then we kind of relax because, hey, he got Kevin Durant over. He, he, somehow, he got Kevin Durant. He convinced him, hey, man, leave Golden State. Leave that dynasty you probably got going on over there. Come over here to Brooklyn. I mean, come to New York. Not the Nets. I mean, not the Knicks, but the Nets. Come on over here, man. You know, you know we're going to team up. We're going to get this burrow popping again. We're going to make the Nets great again. Okay, that, that sounded good in theory. KD comes over there, and then we get more shenanigans. Now COVID hits. And now Kyrie Irving said, it's showtime. And he does what he does, being, you know, 
Kyrie Irving. Don't show up the meetings, don't want to play, don't want to do interviews, etc., etc., etc. What do KD say? KD go up to ownership and say, hey, listen, um, uh, it's a guy down in Houston that don't want to be in Houston. I know he don't want to be in Houston because he showed up to um, training camp looking like Frosted the Snowman. With that said, you think we can go ahead and um, trade a couple of pieces down there to go get them? He come here, I get him back in shape, we can make this work. You sure, KD? Yeah, I can make this work. All right, cool. Boom. They make the trade. James Harden come, get himself in shape, get hurt because he was flopping around with the Rockets. And, you know, we seen what happened in the playoffs. KD almost won a series by – he almost beat the Bucks by himself. Get him a couple more inches, no telling how that series turned out, right? And that's no – Kyrie Irving hurt. James Harden in and out. Boom. Cool. Now we come into this season. I think James Harden, James Harden started off the season on fire with KD. Leading the league in assists. KD is leading the league in scoring at the time. Well, him and, him and um, Steph Curry was like tied for number one. But relatively leading the league in scoring. The Nets on fire. You got Patty Mills, Nick Claxton, uh, Blake Griffin, uh, there's a bunch of slew of dudes that we don't really too much care about at the time. Because all you needed was KD and James Harden. And the Nets came out the, ga the gates doing what they did. Then, all of a sudden, we was fine with Kyrie not playing. Hey, go find a trade partner. Send his butt to Florida. Send him to Texas. All right, who cares? Send him to one of the states where vaccine is not even a, a deal. Cool. But he still stick around, right? While, while all at the same time this is happening with the Nets, we got Ben Simmons out here just giving money back. I mean, you might well call him the Salvation Army because he was just donating his checks right back to the organization. Um, just, I don't care. I don't want to play. And, we, you know, we, we've been on this show, and we've been critical of Ben Simmons' attitude. Like, this is piss poor. This is lackluster. This is a, be a professional. Show up to work. But like I told you before the show, where I can sympathize with Ben Simmons is this. Two years ago, well, depending on your mouth, how you look at it, when Kawhi Leonard hit that shot, you know, to beat, to send, you know, Toronto beat Philadelphia, um, one of the most amazing shots in Toronto Raptors history, and Ben Simmons, we, we got the memes. I mean, I've been, Joe LMB, we got the memes of how he looked walking to the locker room. But what people fail to overlook in that playoff run for the 76ers was how out of shape Joel Embiid was, how unserious he took his career during that time where he was sick all the time. They show him before the game eating chicken sandwiches. Like, they, he just didn't seem to get it at the time. And Ben Simmons, to his credit, was there every game, played hard every game, and he for some reason, I don't remember him being a detriment, like a detriment from the free throw line and the three point line as much in that series as he was the following year. I don't know, if, you know, the rest of the NBA just didn't catch on at the time, but I just don't remember him being that much of a detriment. I just remember Joel and B flopping around game after game doing what he do. Come, you know, last year, now Ben Simmons is the problem. Rightfully so, it was his. He, he, he refused to shoot free throws. He, re, he refused to shoot threes. And, and, you know, they lost the series to Atlanta because of it. It is what it is. That happened. But what Ben Simmons is saying in a nutshell is, yo, I had your back when you didn't play up the par once in one playoff run. Why wouldn't you not have my back when I don't play up the par? Instead, you, you kind of threw me to the wolves. You're like, well, I mean... I can't win a series by myself. He's supposed to be the other star. Where he at? So Ben Simmons took exception to that. So now he's not showing up to count and all this. I say all that to say this. At this moment, you finally, I think, in my opinion, you're getting something of equal for Ben Simmons. Why do I say that? Even if you tell me James Harden's best days are behind him, which I would agree, Houston got the best of James Harden. But we just seen James Harden play this year. I can't say that about Ben Simmons. The last time we seen Ben Simmons, he looked at God awful against the Hawks. That's the last time we seen him. And we have yet to see him play this season. 
So you cannot demand this high pocket price when we have not seen him play. If you got the chance to get James Harden, go and get James Harden. Get him in the gym. Get him back on a, nu a nutrition regimen. Keep his butt out the club and whatever else he do on his off time. Pair him up with Joel and B, and I think you have something now. Because now Joel and B finally got a guy that can handle the ball, that can shoot the ball, that can draw fouls, that can be a focal point of an offense other than him. Because Tobias Harris ain't it. I love Curry, but Curry is a one-trick pony. He's going to shoot them threes. That's what you got him there for. That is, this is the type of guy I think you need to get over the hump, one in James Harden. You know, I got it. If you want to talk about the playoff experience with James Harden, that's a whole different story. But with that said, to answer the question, I think Philadelphia finally got a fair enough trade to get off Ben Simmons. And if they don't do it, they dumb as hell, and it's clear out that front office. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> the overall point about uh, Philadelphia needing to do this, because I mean, this is something we've been on for months now, because what the situation for Philadelphia is, is you have an, an all-star who is wasting away. And that's a, that's a net minus for Philadelphia, for Philadelphia. Uh, we critical of Ben Simmons for, you know, a, 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 a myriad of reasons. And I think rightfully so, but I mean, we would be foolish to sit here and say Philadelphia is not better with Ben Simmons. They absolutely would be. But the situation is based on how last season ended in the playoffs when Ben Simmons was just awful. Um, you know, uh, I think Doc Rivers, Joel B. you know, there were comments made that he obviously uh, did not, uh, you know, didn't have the thickest of skin on. You know, you could, you know, I think what you'd like to see is a guy, you know, come out in off season and use his motivation, make him better, tighten his game up, actually shoot, you know, shoot the basketball. Um, with some level of um, efficiency. And, I mean, for whatever reason, it, it, it went the opposite route. You know, I think Ben Simmons did not rise to the occasion, you know, take the criticism and make his game better. And now you have a situation w w uh, that they're in now. I think Daryl Morey has done a pretty poor job with this. You know, we've, 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 um, we've outlined some of the ridiculous trade offers that he's tried to, uh, you know, uh, pull off with some of these other teams. You talk about the Golden State deal with uh, the Wiseman and Wiggins and, you know, all the picks that they have. Like, will you please, please go away? Like, they laughed this dude off the Zoom call probably. So you have all that, and now you're in a situation where I think, you know, just the more I think about this, I think this is one of those rare trades where both teams would win. Philadelphia, I think they win for a couple of reasons. Number one, they're going to trade an all-star who hasn't done anything for them this season. And they're going to get an all-star back. And, you know, a guy who at his best um, can be a real difference maker for you. And so that's going to be a big win. And I think really, you know, when you talk about it from, from just a pure basketball point of view, and I don't think James Harden is quite the player he was a couple of years ago, but you also have to look at the fact that, you know, for whatever reason, it, you know, we know it got stale in Houston when Mike D'Antoni left, and you kind of could see the writing on the wall. Okay, Westbrook's been traded. Okay, this is over. So now you go to Brooklyn. It's a different role. You know, he's out there and he's kind of doing the point guard stuff because Kyrie Irving is a naturally he just he just is a score. That's primarily what he can do. So he takes a little bit of that back seat, does the assist thing, and I think that's something that he can do in Philadelphia as well. But also, can you imagine? how just ridiculous a, a James Harden, Joel Embiid two-man game would be, whether it's a pick and roll, whether it's a pick and pop, whether it's, you know, the lob. You remember the last time Harden, you know, played with kind of a, a legitimate big man was uh, Clint Capella, and that was just something to behold. I mean, the lobs were just, you know, James Harden comes off that pick and roll. You either got to, if you, you know, if you don't help, I mean, it's a foul or a layup or both. And if you do help, then it's a lob. I mean, Embiid is just going to – if if they do that in Philadelphia, if this is to come to pass, it's going to be – that's going to be a real problem for defenses. I think even with this uh, James Harden, because he's such – even though maybe some of his offensive skills have eroded based on some of the rule changes, he's still a fantastic passer. And I think that may be his best attribute at this stage of his career. And so – 
for the for the Nets, I think bringing in Ben Simmons, because what you have here, my, my problem with James Harden coming in, even though I think he's done a good job in a sense to where he's accepted the role to where when you bring in a big three and just these guys are all can be number ones, it's really uh, the whoever the third guy is has to sacrifice the most. Right. So, uh, I, th- I think of Chris Bosh and what uh, he had to do in Miami. Harden's a guy that had to sacrifice. Right. Yep. Kevin Love as well. So the thing about bringing in Ben Simmons is I don't think Ben Simmons would have to sacrifice because he brings a different skill set. When you talk about KB and Kyrie, I mean, those guys are going to score the ball. That's just what you're not going to have a problem. To me, I think if you bring in Ben Simmons, it would be a it would be a really good fit because I think it'd be a situation where he'd be their version of Draymond Green and probably quite a bit, a little bit better than Draymond uh, because Ben Simmons can do everything else on the basketball court except shoot it. Ben Simmons, he can, he can score the ball. He's just going to score it from uh, the painted area. Right. And so you also look at what Ben Simmons is going to bring from a defensive, from, the, from a defensive standpoint. And even though I think Brooklyn has overachieved for much of the season on defense, this would only solidify what they can do on the other end um, even more. So I think it's one of those rare scenarios where both teams would win. I think if you're Philadelphia, I would suspect they would have to maybe give up a little extra. And I think the the good thing about that is they have the backcourt depth to do so. I'm thinking of a guy and maybe a Shake Milton. I, I've seen that. Uh, I think the I don't think the Sixers want to let go of a guy like Tyrese Maxey, and I don't blame them for that. But they do have the depth in the backcourt to where I think a guy like maybe Shake Milton makes sense and that's only gonna that's only gonna bolster the Nets bench the the big question for me from a Brooklyn standpoint is how how does the Kyrie uh thing play out come playoff time because if you get in a situation where you're in a competitive series and now you've got a home game that you need to win is Kyrie really gonna sit or we're gonna have to get to a point we're gonna we're gonna pay that fine that that's where I'm at man like this this whole thing where we let like the state and just whatever executive rules somebody puts in place, if, if I'm the Nets, like, I say, screw that. Like, you got a, a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar owner, whatever's going on, hey, we're going to pay that fine because we out here trying to win. Right. And that's, you know, that that's obviously outside the scope of the uh, the Ben Simmons, James Harden. But I, I really do, man. Like, this is a rare occurrence where I think, I think this will be a win for both teams. And even before James Harden got traded to uh, Brooklyn, I thought based off Philadelphia, Joel Embiid, and obviously Daryl Moore, his former GM, I mean, I thought that was a destination uh, previously that that made a lot of sense, and I still think it does. I think it's a rare occurrence where both teams would uh, would benefit from this uh, from this type of deal. I, I agree. That's I it. Agree. Oh, okay. so, uh, you know, gotcha. I, you know, no, I, I definitely agree, and that you. You remember when we talked about this before we even um, did the segment, what, what my reply was. Like, well, I don't know what we're doing here. This is about the best it's going to get. Get off the pot. Stop messing around. Yeah. You know, and let's, let's make it happen. So I definitely agree. But with that said, man, you want to sign us out and go ahead and get us up, get us up out of here? Yeah, that's it, folks. No rapid today due to my lack of notes. Uh, but we'll be we'll be back. Uh, next week on Tuesday with the full show and hopefully a little bit better. I won't be sideways as much. But as always, thank you for joining us. Like, listen, share, subscribe. And I'm Jay Wise. And I'm Nathan Drinker. And remember, make tomorrow better than today and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we gonna do. We gonna holler at you until next time, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, this is A Drink of Wisdom.